это значит во мне мятежная душа. Я русская, а это значит другой быть просто не могу. С праздником, Севастополь! Люблю тебя! Спасибо! This is Crimea in early 20... You're acting like they were facing genocide and had to join Russia. Allowing secession just like that will encourage weaponizing one's diaspora and weaken minority rights. Why would you allow a minority to prosper if they just leave? Wait, are you fucking claiming that like the Ukrainian government was going to be worse to Russian minorities that are ethnically Russian inside of Ukraine because of what fucking Putin was doing? I mean, that you're putting the cart before the horse, dude. What the fuck? You literally, this is not even a chicken or the egg situation. You are now doing Russian propaganda. That is the propaganda that the Kremlin does, for the record. You just owned your own, that's an own goal, dude. You owned your own argument. Nearly three years after the Russian takeover. It is the day of the founders of the fatherland. In other words, a very patriotic celebration, particularly for the people of Sebastopol who use this day to celebrate their pride in Russia. Люди не понимают, что действительно происходит. Люди думают, что мы здесь в оккупации. Как мы можем находиться в оккупации, если мы сделали свой выбор? Like literally, Russians are just like, dude, we, I mean, the fucking dudes in Crimea are literally like, we, we love this, this is great. And you're like, no, no, that's not, that fucking sucks. Возвращение домой в Россию. Нам силу дает наша верность отчизне. И наши мысли и наше будущее должны быть с Россией. In a controversial referendum, over 95% of Crimeans voted to join Russia in 2014. Though the annexation and the referendum are not recognized internationally, many of the Crimeans we met were eager to obtain their Russian citizenship. Don't you think the annexation still violates Ukraine's sovereignty? Okay, dude, here, let me fucking put it in like radlib terms or something. It's not even radlib to say this, but let me put it in terms that is, is a little bit more understandable for you. It's land back. How about that? Is that better? The feelings of Russian nationalism in Crimea is pure irredentism. Justifying this by the majority want to be a part of Russia supports this. In Ukraine, they are an oppressed group. Doesn't matter whether Marxist or not, they deserve self-determination. A lot of Crimeans are hoping for a return to the peninsula's glory days. When it was known as a popular tourist destination for Soviet elites, vacationing along the Black Sea coast. We're in the southern town of Alushta, which has seen a massive amount of development over the last three years. Dude, I don't know why people keep saying under no coercion whatsoever. Like, there are there are poll after poll that support the conclusion that Crimeans favor rejoining Russia and are happy with it. And you keep, keep saying coercion. Are they constantly under gunpoint for the past fucking eight years? It's so delusional. You are denying reality. Why can you not be charitable in this circumstance? Holy fuck. Shit, dude. And then they turn Ukrainian Sudentaland. Yeah, okay, dude. Yeah. Please, please, I beg you, I beg you, please be more charitable, okay? Try to understand that maybe this is one instance where you are in the wrong, okay? It's hard. I admitted I was wrong. I said Russia is not going to fucking put boots inside of Ukrainian territory. I was wrong. I admitted it. Now I expect you to also fucking be uh doing the same okay please like you're arguing against the people that and their own fucking wishes for what like fuck vladimir putin okay fuck vladimir putin you know i am not a fan of vladimir putin okay he is a kleptocratic authoritarian capitalist kgb agent okay he's a brutal he's a brutal uh, brutal man a violent man the crimea circumstance is different and even though crimea is the example that they will use to justify additional annexation you should be able to separate between those two things looking at historic precedents looking at cultural ties looking at ongoing opinions of the people that are living there crimea had their own parliament and their own constitution even before 2014 since 92 it was something like something like not exactly like scotland the uk yeah it, it is like that no it's it's a great that scotland is a great example kgb agents on their way to poison you have fun smile heart putin <sighs> please tell me if you agree or disagree by the way this is important too for the record crimea all white 19 percent in the east and this is where all of the territorial problems come from. The country is led by this area, okay? The Ukrainian country's heart is right here. The Russian contested territories are here and here. 37% support for pursuing NATO integration. 13% in the East support NATO integration. Do you want to know why? Because those are the people who are closest to the Russian border and are fucking Russian. 
That's why I say Ukraine is a, is a complex situation where you have to fucking understand that the best path forward is neutralization and be, and allowing Ukraine to develop its own fucking sovereignty by partnering both with Russia and also with European nations. I know that both sides do not want the other side to do that. I know that Russia doesn't want uh, EU uh, support and EU does not want, well, not even EU, but like the UK and America and Canada does not want Ukraine to fucking deal with Russia at all. But to have a black and white approach to this circumstance is really fucking stupid. Do you guys now at least understand a little bit better why I keep saying Crimea is different, Crimea is different, Crimea River, Crimea is different. Maybe we should have just like looked at these fucking polls instead of me just ca me saying like there are numerous polls time after time after time that have shown that like consistently Crimeans actually want to fucking, uh, you know, uh, join Russia. That's largely thanks to uh, Mr. Alexander Lebedev. Lebedev is a Russian billionaire with a combative reputation. He spotted an opportunity for an energetic tycoon like himself. You're building a church, you're building so, a theater, you're building yeah. a clinic, you're building yeah. hotels. Yeah. You own pretty much all of this then. Yeah. This is an investment of about 200 million euro dollar, it's whatever. And I've never picked up a penny of profit. I love the place and I treat it as a mission. I picked up a few missions in life. It's always better to put some butter. Some butter? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm such an amateur. Why is it that Russia is so focused on developing Crimea? Well, uh, I have no doubt that Putin is very much interested to show results in Crimea. That's beyond any doubt. But he has something to prove here. You no, know, the whole Russian nation has something to prove here. And what is that they need to prove? That they'll be running the place much better than it was run by Ukraine. Ukraine neglected completely Crimea. And so what the Russians are doing, they're investing 10 times, 20 times more money into infrastructure, even putting back all of the tourists within such a short period of time. The projected boom in tourism that Russia's support would bring excited a lot of local business owners. People like Oleg Zubkov, who runs a safari park. Это как раз есть референдум и весна, те знаменитые тигры, которые родились в ночь, когда крымчане голосовали. Это была дань тем патриотическим чувствам, с которыми мы встретили переход Крыма в состав России. Изабелла, мы должны быть together, вместе, вместе. Я сейчас закрою дверь. I hear that you wanted these beasts to play a role in Crimea's return to Russia. Да, это правда. Oh, если бы эти львы вышли на внешние границы, то они воевали бы с украинскими националистами, которые, ну, хотели нас русских побить, там, изничтожить. Иди сюда, иди ко мне. Dude, they're psychotic. Dude, Russians are fucking psychotic people. I swear to God. Tiger czar. <laughs> oh, dude, holy shit. She's not comfortable with that. Также и бандеровцы, по моему убеждению, должны были испугаться львов. But Zubkov's initial enthusiasm for a Russian Crimea soon turned to disillusionment when his business began to suffer. How much is your business down by? Ну, сегодня осталось от того объема, который был в украинском Крыму, одна треть, и она продолжает уменьшаться. Why do you think that is, that tourist numbers are down? Ну, во-первых, мы полностью лишились украинского потока. Сегодня, сегодня всего этого нет. Крым находится в изоляции и находится под э, достаточно жесткими санкциями. More worrying than the dip in tourists, though, is the fact that Crimea is running dry. In large part because in 2014, Ukraine dammed the North Crimean Canal. Oh, this is... The, oh, fuck. I totally forgot about this. This is incredibly fucked up. In an effort to like, in an effort to starve out Crimea as a consequence of their vote in favor of Russian annexation, they literally fucking damned Crimea. I can't believe I forgot to mention that too, by the way. Totally fucking nonviolent means, but also again, Ukraine is not so fucking innocent in this situation either, for the record. Previously provided 85% of the peninsula's fresh water. Это было огромное водохранилище. Сегодня воды от прошлого водохранилища осталась маленькая лужа. Вот этой воды нам не хватит и на один месяц. 
Я думаю, что будут страдать очень многие и жители городов, если проблему правительства не решить. Look at this guy, look at this guy. Well, it's not Ukraine anymore. Russia can provide the water now. Yeah, except, you know, Turkey did that to fucking Syria, okay? And it was completely unacceptable. So much so that they had to literally normalize relationships with Syria back in the day because of the rivers that flew from Turkey into Syria. Water is a fucking human right. Shut the fuck up, idiot. За счет других водохранилищ. But the Kremlin says it has a solution to the water problem, the tourist problem, and just about every other problem in the Oh, country. for the record, uh, uh, for people saying like, I thought that was illegal or whatever. No, of course it's not illegal if you are fucking backed by Western allies. You can literally do whatever the fuck you want. Just like Saudi Arabia keeps creating a, a, a artificial man-made famine in Yemen, but it doesn't matter because Saudi Arabia is our ally. You can violate all manner of human rights. It doesn't fucking matter. As long as you got big dick America, backing you that's the point i laugh at you if you bring up international law that's why i always tell you like international law is a laughable fucking concept okay and you know exactly as chatter pointed out collective punishment is literally illegal okay but sanctions are collective punishment it's a violation of human rights and it doesn't fucking matter we are the ones who do the sanctions all the fucking time we visited while construction was still ongoing we're standing on the biggest bridge in Russian history. It's going to be 12 miles long. It stretches all the way from Russian mainland, which is just over there, to Crimea. President Putin triumphantly opened the mega project earlier this year. It's a wonderful result that makes Krim and Sevastopol even more powerful. Nations are expressly allowed under international law. Please stop. But yes, Crimea is different. Hey, dumbass, I'm once again showing you that, like, there is a difference, okay? We're the ones who do the sanctions, but we can get away with it. But sanctions are collective punishment. 500,000 Iraqi uh, babies dead as a consequence of sanctions. Can you tell me that's all right? And that's allowed, dude? Oh, well, they carved out sanctions. Okay, I guess that's all right then. You love talking about morality versus legality when it comes to everything else, but for some reason, when it comes to sanctions, you're like, oh, actually, legality is, is just the right and moral thing to do here. Us, еще ближе друг другу. Now that Russia has further cemented its grip on Crimea, both physically and symbolically, we Thank travel you, to Ukraine's capital, Kiev, to meet the people still pushing for reunification. What the fuck is that, bro? I've never seen that. That's like an ultra swastika, bro. I've never seen that shit. They were like, swastika is so nice, we had to do it thrice. My man was like, a swastika is not enough. I need to do a fucking mega swastika, okay? Uh, there's a lot of far-right militias who are coming here to... It's just so strange, always. Always, the, the pro-Ukrainian movement is always partnered up with so many fucking different nationalist elements. I don't know how. What are you guys doing here today? Do you think the Ukraine can take Crimea back? The hangover of Crimea only emboldens these far-right militia groups, many of whom are actively fighting Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine where a bloody conflict has claimed over 10,000 lives since 2014. But other Ukrainians have focused on curbing the Kremlin's soft power. Ukraine is currently home to over one third of Russian Orthodox churches, which are often criticized for being vessels for Putin's propaganda. But in a historic decision, Orthodox leadership finally agreed to grant the Ukrainian church independence from Moscow. What does this mean to Ukrainian people? I believe that this moment uh, shows our cultural identity. It helps to unite all Ukrainians in one nation. How did the situation with the annexation of Crimea impact what's happening now? Ukrainian people, they are usually quite patient, but... Some of them are wearing masks for this group, S14. C14 is a Ukrainian nationalist group founded in 2010 that gained notoriety in 2018 uh, for being involved in violent attacks on Romani camps.
My Northern Irish friend called mobile home communities gypsies or Irish traveling communities or actually bikers. Fun fact, but Facebook wouldn't let me have my last name because it's a, technically a slur. Anyway. Step by step, Russia showing her aggression and we have to fight back. I gotta pee, I'll be back. We've arrived here in Kiev at a very opportune moment because the president is about to make his first speech to Ukrainian people to talk about the declaration of independence of the Ukrainian church from the Russian Orthodox Church. Слово має президент України Петро Порошенко. Це велика перемога боголюбивого українського народу над московськими демонами. Ми за місяць ще більше переконалися, що помісна церква є одним із ключових елементів запорукою незалежності нашої держави. This is about more than religion. And while Ukrainian parishioners attended Sunday Mass, President Putin took the news as a major blow. The Kremlin immediately denounced the church's decision and even said it would defend Russian believers if threatened in Ukraine, sparking real fears of further violence. The fear of escalating conflict rang true. Just this week, Russia shot at and seized three Ukrainian ships and 20... By the way, uh... Uh, I, I want to remind people about something here, but uh, top of the hour ad break is here. But also, um, oh, here's the woman ad break now. But the other thing I was going to say is we talked. Remember when I old old heads remember this, probably old heads remember this. Remember when I fucking talked about uh, Azov Battalion like a couple of years ago, maybe like a year ago or two years ago, and people got fucking mad and they were like, uh, th those photos are photoshopped. Some people will remember that, uh, like I talked about the Azov Battalion like a, a couple, maybe like two years ago or a year ago, and there were like debunkers debunking me, and they were like, uh, actually photos are fucking photoshopped, and uh, you know, the Azov Battalion, like technically they're not Nazis, like even though it was 100% a Nazi flag, and they were like, well that's not a real flag, that was just a Photoshop flag, even though they were wearing patches with the Nazi patches too. Probably ban most of those people now, because you know, they fucking are now full-blown like NATO Andes, but... 24 sailors who were in the shared waterway of the Kerch Strait. Moscow has maintained a geostrategic naval base on the peninsula for decades, allowing them to reach Eastern Europe, the Mediterranean, and Syria. As part of an effort to monitor the militarization in the region, Ukraine established the Ministry of Temporarily Occupied Territories and IDPs headed by Vadim Chernish. So what can you tell us about any military developments that you've uh, seen you can see here Right, in fact, I'm from Saarland, the smallest state in Germany. There was a referendum in the 1930s where over 90% of people voted for a unification with Nazi Germany. Hey, at least you admit it. I'm certain that right now, if we were to ask other places that also voted to unify with Germany, they would probably have a different fucking point of view and act like they totally did it under duress and not because they genuinely wanted to be a part of Germany. So, you know. For example, there are places where as 400 team of complex established by Russians. So from your satellite images, you've picked like, yes. three new uh, missile bases here. Right, they can reach a lot of countries, including Middle East. They use uh, Crimea as a military base. So essentially, this ministry was formed in order to try and take back what Ukraine sees as occupied territories, including Crimea. What actual work are you doing to achieve those goals? We are trying to win hearts and minds of Ukrainians who live within occupied territories. Isn't it a bit late for that? If most people are now happy with the fact that Russia has taken Crimea. We have been trying to support our population because they are Ukrainian citizens. Wait, what question? Even if they agree to unify with Russia, should they be allowed to on a geopolitical standpoint? Yes, dude. What the fuck? Yes. Yes. What do you mean geopolitical? Like, I, I am not in the business of fucking uh, telling people that want to fucking join Russia that they can't join Russia. That's so fucking insane. 
What a crazy fucking take that is, dude. God, Americans, man, we are such pieces of shit. Imagine having this take like about people that want to do a particular thing and we're just like, no, uh, uh, should we allow that to happen? Should we allow Germany and, and Russia to build a second pipeline? I don't know. It will undermine our strategic interests in the region because it will give Russia more power. You know, maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we shouldn't allow that. You know who thinks that way? Colonizers. Actual motherfuckers at the heart of the imperial core. I'm just thinking about like people in fucking Iraq. Can you imagine like Iraqi citizens being like, bro, should we let, uh, you know, should we let Russia do this pipeline or what? Ahmed. And, and uh, Ahmed's like, uh, I don't know, bro. Like, no, dude, that's not happening anywhere else. Okay. That's just America and UK. Uh, I do not consent. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Like, I don't even think China does this shit. Not even China does it. Exactly. You, you think Chinese? You think Chinese motherfuckers are sitting around being like, "Should we allow? Should we allow this to happen?" The funniest part about that also is that they don't even have. They sometimes have this fucking conversation when it comes to like Taiwan or comes to to, to places that they claim to have historical claim over, and then we get mad at that. Meanwhile, we're having this conversation for everyone else. Like, we're literally having that combo for everybody else. That's imperialism. That's the difference between imperialism and being a sovereign power, okay? Russia influenced a lot. They, they use their secret service. They use their propaganda bribes. They demonstrate some, some success in infrastructure development. And they don't want to show problems in hum both human rights in Crimea. Russia's abysmal human rights record has trickled down to Crimea, leading the US to announce additional sanctions in November 2018. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like illegal annexation, human rights abuses, all this shit, right? It's like, how are we doing that? Think about who we apply these sanctions to and why we apply these sanctions. Just think about that for a second. And who we don't apply those sanctions to, I'm simply asking you to consider why. We use sanctions on certain groups in certain countries and not others when they are consistent routine violators of said human rights abuses, okay? Here in Kiev, the Crimean Human Rights Group works to collect testimonies and evidence of illegal detention and torture. Alexander, tell me, please, what time you spent in Sosinferopolis? How long have you been there? Nine months. Nine months. Alexander Kostenko was eventually moved to a prison and held for over three years in what he claims are baseless charges of assault and possession of illegal weapons. I gave... I ran the air brake already. The team here has documented dozens of cases like this one. The founder, Olga Skripnik, was also forced to flee her home in Crimea in 2014. What kind of activities were these people involved in in order to get picked up by the Russian authorities? Більшість цих людей вони були пов'язані з якимись активними формами громадянських активності. Це, наприклад, журналісти або блогери, або це були активісти, які просто виступали проти окупації. Як, наприклад, Володимир Балух, він просто підняв український прапор на своєму домі в селі, і лише через це проти нього відкрили кримінальну справу. Recently, have things got better or worse? Порівняно, наприклад, з 2014 роком на 2018 рік кількість таких людей, хто незаконно позбавлений волі через їх погляди, зросла в п'ять разів. There's almost no reliable data on what's actually going on in Crimea, and Russia holds a tight grip over all information coming out. Recently, even traveling to the peninsula has become difficult. So we wanted to catch up with Oleg. Say something. Say what? It's completely fucking unacceptable. Like, what do you mean, say something? What Russia does in this circumstance is exactly what I mean when I say, one, this, okay, Vladimir Putin is bad. And two, when I say he's an authoritarian kleptocrat, there's nothing to say in that situation. I'm not a defender of Russia, okay? Unequivocal defender or supporter of Russia. Zubkov, the zookeeper, to ask if things really have become worse. Has there been any change? 
change in atmosphere there? I mean, now that the Russians have been there for four years? Вот Крым превращается в такое, знаете, полицейское государство, военизированное государство. Two options that didn't include rejoining Ukraine is very sus. It's just so odd to me that once again, okay, if that was so fucking sus, why are they not why are they not fighting back against it, dude? For eight years under duress, is the duress continued? Is that what you're saying? Was all this worth it? Yes, he's literally talking about how as a police state, dude, you are fucking bananas. It's one fucking dude, as opposed to numerous fucking polls conducted by Western pollsters over the course of the past eight years, dude. I mean, I'm sorry, but you're one guying this because Vice uh, portrayed the narrative that way in the end. Oh, I'm gonna lose my mind, dude. I mean, fuck 80% of Crimeans who uh, agree with the fucking choice in the referendum. What are they supposed to say after being conquered? Dude, you're, you're, you're uh, pissing me off now. I think you're just saying shit. Just so you can fucking, uh, like, you sound like a QAnon supporter, dude. Oh, dude, the polls are actually wrong. Or there's a, there's another underlying reason for why they, uh, you know, say that to the pollsters. It's fucking bullshit, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, you got owned, okay? It sucks to suck, but. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>